Welcome to our Watch and Learn today. I'm Johnny Barpas. With me is Kim Sandberg. Hey. We are studio educators here at Handy Quilter. Today we're talking tension. Yes, troubleshooting tension. You guys, I can feel the tension in the air just talking about tension. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> this is one of the biggest things we get calls about. Yes. The, the hardest thing to diagnose and troubleshoot over the phone. Absolutely. So that's why we're going to give you the A to Z's, the everything yep. you want to know about tension. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Okay, so first, Kim, we're going to start with the bobbin. Yes. Actually, we're going to start with threading the machine. I oh want to start gosh. up here at the top. It's okay. Bobbin is part of threading the machine. You, you got it. Threading the machine. So we'll, let's start with threading the machine because you cannot tension properly if your machine isn't threaded correctly. Exactly. Right, Johnny? Yep. End of story. Okay, first of all, I want you all to know there are lots of resources out there for how to thread your machine. First of all, when you buy your machine, it comes with one of these sheets. They are quick reference cards. And on the first page, it shows you how to thread your machine. Mm -hmm. If you've lost yours or misplaced it, these are available at handyquilter.com under the resources section under user manuals. So just look for the one that matches with your machine and you can print out and have this handy little diagram to help you thread your machine. Yes. We also have something else really cool on the Amara, the Forte and the Infinity. Johnny, you want to tell us about that? Yeah, the, the uh, thread guide. The mm -hmm. Threading guide. The threading guide. Yeah. So the map of how to thread it is right there on your console. Exactly. And there's a big one, there's a far away shot, and then there's a zoomed in as well. So exactly. if you ever get lost on those machines, it's right there. You can zoom in. I've used it many a time. Me too. <laughs> Me too. So lots of resources, but let's go through the thread path. First of all, as we take a closer look here, we put our cone of thread on the spool pin right here. Now, if you are using a spool of thread and you have your horizontal spool pin, horizontal spool pin, horizontal okay. spool pin this is where you would start with threading. But we're going to show you with a cone. So we put it here. We come up through the thread mast down into the first thread guide. Now, just so you know, every handy quilter machine threads in essentially the same way. There are a few of the machines that don't have this thread guide right here. It's okay, you're not missing a part. If you don't have one there, it's okay. So first thread guide. Next, we come to the three hole thread guide. Now, this three hole thread guide, we thread from the back and then loop around and from the back and loop around and from the back. But, Johnny, depending on which thread we're using, right. may depend on how many holes we thread yeah. through, right? And is it always, ha we call, I call that barber pole style. Right. So it kind of wraps around that three holes, mm -hmm. thread like a barber pole. Does it have to always be like that, Ken? Nope. As a matter of fact, I know that, oh, I can't even remember which thread it was. I was gonna think of, of it this morning, but that's okay. Sometimes you want to come through from the back, go straight down, go through this way, go straight down, and then come back through the last hole. Right, so that would be like kind yeah. of serpentine. The trick yeah. is figuring out what gives you the best tension with the thread that you're working with, right? That's a new dance move. Man. I like that. Ooh, a new dance you move. Guys, you guys know I love the dance move. So it can go barber pole style yes. or it can go serpentine down, depending on what the thread is. For basically straight across the board, we recommend the barber pole, right? Yes, yes, we do. Always try that first. Always try that first. Yeah. Next, we come down and, oh my goodness, you guys can actually see right here, I am missing this thread guide. So I'm just gonna pop that thread in. This thread guide is very important, the one right above the tensioner, because it helps keep that thread lined up so that it will pull smoothly through the tension discs. So after this thread guide, we go around the tension discs. Now it is super important that we get that thread flossed into those tension discs. So think of flossing your teeth, you gotta pop it down in there. Then we bring that thread up and, and right here is the check spring. It has to come up and over the check spring. Now an easy way to know if you actually have your thread through the tension disc and flossed pop properly is when you tug on that thread right at this point. If that check spring moves, bingo, you've got it. Right, right. Johnny? Yep. 
Okay, so backlash spring, then we go underneath this guide, which is called the stirrup guide. If you look at it from the front straight on, it makes a number seven. So Excellent. underneath, then we come up through our take-up lever. This from the back to the front again, down to our last thread guide that's actually mounted on the side of the machine. This is called the pigtail, or some people call it a paper clip because it looks like a paper clip when you look straight at it. We put the thread through there. Next, we come down to the needle bar thread guide. And this is a small hole in this collar that has the thumb screw on it that holds your needle in place, right? Right. So we go from the front to the back down, then the thread travels straight down, and we thread our needle at that point. And you, did you point out the groove in the front of that needle? That is so important. If you've ever really accidentally quick. put your needle in backwards, um, let's admit it, we've all done it. And the scarf is to the front. Oh, Johnny, come on, you've done okay, it. I've you know you have, you know you have. Um, the, we need the, ne the long groove down the front of the needle. That means that you can take your a finger now and you can actually run your finger down that groove really easily all the way down the front. If you have it turned around backwards, the scarf is just a little bump right there. And, and you'll feel that, yeah, it's an indent inside the needle, right? We should have had our giant needle for this. Well, this. you know oh, what, well. I bet we can. We might superimpose a picture of our we giant We might be needle. able to slip so that, that one in there. The scarf is the back, so just yeah. remember that back cut out, that's, to, that's for the back of the needle. Exactly. So that long groove down the front of the needle, that actually helps protect the thread as it, the needle goes down through the fabric. So it's very important to have that to the front. If the scarf isn't to the back, you're not going to create a stitch because as the bobbin hook comes up, it doesn't have that little indentation to catch the back side of the thread right. and create a loop. So that long so, groove in the front, that's like one of our running jokes around here. Our, yes. One of our engineers, um, Glenn. Glenn. Yeah, sorry. He was just teaching about this week. We had a class um, yes. training this week. And he says it every time. Now, what's the name of that part called? It's called the long groove, groove. down the front. So exactly. if you ever can't get a stitch and you just change your needle and make sure it's in the front. Long groove goes to the front. Okay. So we now have our machine properly threaded. And as I pull and give it a little gentle tension right here, I can see that my thread is still firmly seated in between my tension discs because my backlash spring is bouncing as I pull on it. Very important. Always double check that. And we'll probably harp on those tension discs a lot this yes. conversation. That's another big, another big phone call that we yes. get is I'm getting, and we'll talk about that in a second, yeah. but looping on the back, mm -hmm. if you have looping on the back, it's almost guaranteed yep. that you're not flossed in the tension discs. So whenever you hear, whenever you see that looping gathered up on the back, really ugly stitching, make sure that's, that's tight in there, that's pulled tight in those tension discs. Exactly, it solves so. the problem. Well, All right, well the next one is, Johnny. The bobbin. The bobbin. And we always set the bobbin tension first. Right. And Glenn, again, had a great, found a great example of this. Yep. Building a house, what's the yep. most important part of building a house? Getting the foundation right. Otherwise, everything, mm, right. not so great. So our bobbin is the foundation for a good stitch on quilting. Exactly. So you want to set that bobbin tension first. So Kim, show us yep. how you do that. So first of all, I put my bobbin into the bobbin case. I just pop it in with the thread, making a number nine. So it's coming off so it will turn clockwise. I'll pop it in there. I'll bring the thread up through the little slot right here. Pull it so that it pops up underneath that tension spring. And then it's properly threaded. And you can see as I pull on it, it is turning in a clockwise direction. Next, I want to tension my bobbin. We use the larger screw up here at the top to adjust the tension on the bobbin spring. The lower screw that's the small one, that actually holds the bobbin spring in place. So we do to the right is tighter, to the left is looser, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And the way to check is you lay your bobbin down flat in your hand with the metal side down, grab the thread, and we pull, and your bobbin stands up in your hand. And look at this, if it, can you see that that is just rising off of my hand? That means it's what, Johnny? A little too tight. It's a little too tight. So we don't want to rise at all. Yeah, we don't want it to lift off of my hand. I will use my small screwdriver that came with my 
machine and with this large screw just ever so slightly do a really slight movement to the left. And we'll test it again. That's still a little too tight. So. And just for your information, we're going to do a whole episode on bobbins in the yep. future. I think just next week. Or I, next yes, week. yes, we're planning so on doing that we're, next week. We're uh, doing an, a bobbin episode, so you can get you know all about bobbins and bobbin mm -hmm. tension and everything bobbin, bobbin estimator. All those great questions that we get. Okay, I have my bobbin tension set correctly, and I'll go ahead and pop my bobbin in to my bobbin awesome. hook, and let's bring up my bobbin. All right, so Johnny, let's talk about, first of all, doing a little something for yourself. We want to challenge all of you to make a tension sampler for yourself. This is gonna encourage you to turn this knob. This knob right here on our tensioner is where we adjust our tension, unless if you have an infinity. An infinity right. is on the screen, so it's the only one that's a little different. All the rest of the Handy Quilter machines Clear back to the original HQ16, have this knob right here. And this is something that Christina made up to yes. show differences in tension. And we were thinking today, yeah, if you, if you, if the if tension is a challenge for you, mm -hmm. make a little sampler. Just put some thread in. She used really contrasting threads. Yes. You can see that, Kim, we have fluorescent green on top and fluorescent orange, orange on, on the, bottom. the bottom. So we can really see a difference. So we urge you to... Just try that out and mm -hmm. make yourself a little sampler as well so you can, and then Christine is marked on there. Okay, this yes. was too tight, this was too loose, this is perfect. So you can have a good reference guide. Now, we are going to attempt to recreate this. We're not so, going to attempt. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. What, what is hard is making us purposely have wrong tension. We're so used to finding that right tension. But let's go ahead and start stitching and we'll see where we are. now. Any time you, before you start stitching on a quilt, you've loaded it, you have everything ready to go, we always recommend that you check your tension first, every single time. Every time you change your bobbin, check your tension, right Johnny? Yeah. Because even if you're using a pre-wound, and you're using a, another pre-wound from the same box, you never know there might be a slight difference between those two bobbins. You check your tension every time. We usually do just a little piece of fabric out to the side with some batting on it. Make sure you have batting when you're checking your tension because it's gonna be way different than if you don't have batting in between those layers of fabric, right? Yeah, and this happened to me like the last couple of, a couple of quilts ago. I was mm -hmm. using a, the same pre-wound bobbins from the same box and some of them are just wound a little bit yep. too big. Yep. And I would be quilting fine with a whole, you know, two and a half rows. I put a different bobbin in, everything would go to pot. And I'd be like, what the heck is going on? No. Put a different bobbin in, it'd be fine. So I just had to rewind those bobbins. So yeah. it, it's a, it can happen. So we yep. do your jersey every time, check your bobbin tension. Every time. Anytime you change either one of your threads, check your bobbin tension. So, okay, well, let's, let's start doing some stitching. Let's see where my tension is right now with this machine. So let's go ahead and do some loops and some stars. So. Johnny, why would I choose to do loops and stars when I'm check, checking tension? You can, it shows the stitching in basically every possible configuration that you're right. going to do. A loop will show you on a big round loop. Circle. Stars will show you points. Exactly. So Kim's done a couple of loops and a couple of points on a star. Tell us how it looks. How's it look? Well, like? actually, it looks okay. It looks like we've got pretty good tension here. Go figure, huh? <laughs> and we but when I turn it over to the back, we've got a different story. Okay, what's going so, on? So, and this is why, okay, let me bring my needle up. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the back here. Let's take a look at this. You will see that my bobbin thread is actually laying very flat on the back. And you can actually see little, and this is a very technical term, we call them pokies. You can see that top thread being pulled down and you can see the green on the bottom. Now, just a note here. Johnny, do we recommend stitching with two different colors of thread? No, if on someone a, calls us and they say, yeah. I'm stitching with white thread on the top and fluorescent green on the back and I keep seeing green, we'll immediately say, don't do that. Don't do that, <laughs> don't do that. When you 
are stitching, you always want to have at least similar colors. They don't need to be exactly the same color, but if you're using a green on the top, use a green on the back, okay? Um, fabric is fluid, it moves, and those stitches can move around a little bit. Also, the amount, like how thick your batting is, how lofty it is, can adjust, um, make adjustments to this too. Mm -hmm. So, Johnny, my thread is laying flat on the back, and I'm getting pokies on the back. What do I need to adjust? Okay, so we're gonna give a, give you the tug of war yes. example. I love it. I like. <laughs> and this Get is our a hands shout out. out <laughs> a shout out to Vicky. Yes. So she would always say, "Okay, that I think of a tug of war. You got mm -hmm. your top stitch pulling this way, yep. your bobbin pulling this way, <laughs> and you want them to meet in the middle in that batting. Right. So if you have flatting on the back." back that means your bob intentions being a bully. Exactly, and it's winning the tug of it's war. It's winning the tug of war. We so want to have an to, even con uh, an even contest. Don't let your thread be a bully. Yeah. So you need to adjust your top tension to right. the top. So. So I need to make my top tension what tighter or looser? Tighter. Tighter, which means I need to turn my tension knob right here, to the right, or when you're looking straight at the machine away from you, and when we turn the tension knob. We'll take a closer look here. You put your thumb on the top and you turn it all the way around. Now I can't quite do it all the way, but I'm gonna do a half a turn. You notice I got my thumb clear to the top, clear down to the bottom. Then I'm gonna grab from here and turn it again. I'm gonna do a full turn, okay? Your top tension, you always wanna do a big turn. If you just do a little teeny tiny turn, is it really gonna affect your tension? No. No. And it's not like we talk a lot about we're used to our domestic machines yes. where you're told, like we talked heard about yesterday, like yeah. your grandma Never. teaches you to sew, your mom teaches you to sew, and like she slapped your hands. We try to adjust Never that tension. Touch that so tension. long arm is a completely different story. You have to really make a big move, a big change on that tensioner to see a change. So we say one full turn. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so let's see if the turn that, that we made here, if the correction we made fixes the problem. So let's go ahead, a loop. And then a star. And I'll pull out here to the side. Pull and we my... use the Capri specifically so we could show you, like, easily flip the fabric over. Yeah. Okay, it's looking better on the front. It actually looks really good. I've got a nice stitch. But on the back, I'm still getting those pokies just a hair. So this is where I would only do, like, maybe... A half a turn. A half turn. Yeah. So we'll try that again. And have you ever seen someone put like a little dot on their tensioner or something like that? No, but you know. I was just thinking that might be a good idea. Well, like that, that could if probably you have, work. Like, a silver sharpie or some pink nail polish. <laughs> I was gonna say pink nail polish. Just put a little tiny dot in one spot so you can see it when you've gone all the way around. Okay, let's take a closer look at the stitching I just did, and see if we got it. Yeah, it's looking better. I'm still getting pulling here on my corners a little bit. So let's tighten it just a little bit more. All right, Johnny? Another half turn, maybe? Yeah, another half turn. So needle down, needle up. I'll pull up my bobbin thread. Let's do. And let's take a look at that again. All right. Wow. Oh my goodness. Look at that, Johnny. Perfect. I got a perfect stitch. Sorry, I've got a little bobbin thread going here. Okay. But you can no longer see that. Can you give her a good shot of that on the camera? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can no longer see any of the green coming through. That is perfect tension. So we All just right. fixed that problem. Okay. So okay. Now and here's just a little tip. At this point, you can take a look at the screen of your machine and you can note what the number is on the tension. Remember, the tension number on every machine is totally unique. So you could set up a little notebook and note, this is the thread I was using, this is the bobbin I was using, this is what the number's at. Now, is that number gonna be exactly the same for the same thread combination on every quilt? No. Absolutely not. But it'll give you a ballpark to start in, right? Yeah. Exactly. All right. So I think we should try a little example now. Yeah. Tighten it even more. Should we tighten it even more? Yeah. Okay. Let's just go crazy. Let's see what like happens. It was super loose. Okay. Or this is how you started out. 
Let's see. So let's, show what, let's just show what it looks like if I was to tighten it even more. Let's see if we can get that to pull the bobbin thread up to the top, right? Okay, so let's do this. Oh, I'm going to tighten it even a little bit more. Oh, yep. Okay, I'm going to tighten it just a little bit more because I'm just starting to be able to see exactly what I'm looking for here. All right, so let's take a look here. So you can see just barely right here in these corners and just in between this green stitching, I can see those little pokies go in there. Can you angle it up for her? Yeah, thanks. So right here on the corners and then in between the stitching, you can just see that little orange thread starting to pop up. So that tells me what, Johnny? Which one's winning in the tug of war? Now the top's being a bully. Top's He's being a bully. Exactly. And show the back. Can you okay. see Yeah, the let's go the to the back. Well, well all right, and this is a little bit harder to see on this black fabric, but you might be able to see that it's kind of puckering just a little. And once again, puckering means that tension somewhere is too tight. Right. In this case, it's the top because I'm not seeing any of my green on the back. So we know that we need to loosen that up. So we have showed you what happens when it's too tight on the top or too loose on the top. Let's show you what it looks like when it's really too loose on the top. Like Johnny mentioned, if we are not in our tension disc. So don't do this, <laughs> except to stitch it out and see what it's like. Yeah, but but I'm actually gonna pop my thread out of my tension discs, yeah. okay? If you, so and I'm gonna loosen them way up. Do that, but if you actually tighten your tension too tight, It'll actually mm -hmm. push that thread out of the tension disc. Yep, yep. So we have people, they'll call, same okay. thing, like, oh, yeah. I've been cranking and cranking and cranking, and I promise it's lost. And I can't even turn it anymore. I've actually had people send me a picture. So if you're out there and I've forced you to mail me a picture or send a picture yes. to my phone, then I can, we can see visually if that mm -hmm. thread is going on the outside or if it's actually flossed in there. So let me show you a really common one is if I go like this. So let me pull this a little bit. Are you can, you, can you see that the thread is actually going into the spring right here rather than into it? And let's oh. show you what stitching looks like when this happens. I'm afraid. <laughs> I'll just Don't do try it. this at home. Don't try Tim this at is home. a certified professional. I'm a professional. So, and the crazy thing is, oh. okay, so it does not like it. The crazy thing is when I look at my stitching on the top right here, it actually looks okay, but let's see what it looks like on the other side. So when I turn that over, oh wow, we got a nice big hot mess going there. <laughs> look at those, look at those loops. And that is 100% because my thread is not properly flossed in between the two tension discs. So let me fix that real quick. And then we'd be able to stitch again and have it be right where it needs to be. What I do love, if that is the case in a phone call, it's mm -hmm. a really easy solution. Yep. It's a day, it takes a few seconds to go yep. boop, and, you're, and fix you're it. Set, so. so that is the good news. Now, let's talk about um, let's talk about a trilobal polyester, and its little bad habit that it has every once in a while with okay. what is that? the tension discs. So trilobal polyester like Magnifico or Glide, are super slick threads, right? My favorite thread. I know, I know, Magnifico. I love <laughs> Magnifico. We love Magnifico. Between the two of us, <laughs> I think we own every color. We love super Magnifico. <laughs> <laughs> we love stitching with Magnifico. But every once in a while, it, it's so slick that it will pop out of the tension discs. Even though you have perfect tension set up, there's a simple solution for that. What we do is we take the thread and instead of we come down and instead of going through this backlash spring, the second time we wrap around again, then we catch the backlash spring. That way it's firmly seated in there because it makes an entire loop around mm -hmm. and it's not gonna pop out. Now, yeah. with caution, you only do this when you run into that issue. You don't always run that thread that way because it's not always gonna do it, right? right? right. And when you do that, you're putting a lot of extra tension on your thread, so you will need to adjust your tension here. You're, be sure and have that little sample out to the side, give it a test, and see what's going on. So. Awesome.
So I think that's pretty good examples, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. We want to make sure we got some good ones, and we did. And we did. And we actually have a little extra bonus for you on this episode, don't we, Johnny? Yes. We have attached a PDF here that is called Troubleshooting Tension. And it has the four different things that we've talked about, right? Let's take it. Let's take a look and make sure we've covered them. Yeah. So top thread lays flat on the flat okay. on the fabric on, on top. the top. We looked at that. So flatting, we call flatting, is mm -hmm. laying flat on the top. Meaning you're seeing those pokies from your bobbin thread on yeah. the top. Or the bottom thread lays flat. So, so the opposite of that, mm -hmm. which is what we started with with our tension. Um, loops on the bottom. Uh -huh. We talked about that. We just showed you that one. <laughs> and then fabric puckering. Yep. So fabric puckering. Okay, the fabric puckering was like this example right here. And you can see that the fabric yeah, is gathering around the edges a little bit. It gets that puckering. And when you run your finger over it, you can feel like little ripples in the fabric. Okay? Not cute stitches. Yeah. Now, here's another tip. When you are checking your tension, where do we always check your tension on your upper thread on the machine, Johnny? Uh, right there, between. Right between that thread guide. The pigtail and the, thread guide and the yeah. needle bar thread guide. And we've talked about this before, yeah. is giving a little pull on there. You just there. give it a little pull. And you'll feel, I, you'll get to the point where you can feel mm -hmm. a really nice tension. Yeah. And I thought it was crazy at first. I really thought people were silly and out of their minds when they were doing it. And, <laughs> and then you learn. And then I go, oh, yeah, it actually works. So I get it. I get keep it. Keep practicing. Keep trying yep. that. Yep. So next we want to talk. Oh, so keep going. I was going to say my one tip there is, and the way I like to describe it, once again, we know it's really hard to say this in words, but you want your tension to feel firm but not tight. So you can just pull on it and it moves smoothly, but there's obviously tension on it. But if you really have to tug, your tension's too tight. Yeah. Yep. Firm but not too tight. Firm but not tight. Okay, we yep. want to talk about um, ways to maybe hide or yeah. uh, conceal, conceal or, or a, just word? Um, um, enhance good tension. How's that? Yes. So um, a busy back. Yes. A nice busy back mm -hmm. is always good for uh, yeah. you know, yeah. not seeing your tension issues. Yeah. A loftier batting, mm -hmm. so we tend to use like the 80-20 here or something yep. thin, but if you have a loftier batting, that's easier for the, that knot to form inside of the Inside batting, of the batting. Right? Mm -hmm. And always use the same color of thread. Mm -hmm. uh, minky. Minky is a great one on the back. Oh man, you guys, Minky's so great. If yeah. I know a lot of people have a concern about using Minky, oh. and we always like, no, Just don't be use afraid. It. It's so great. It looks so great when you we get love it, it out. Christina was doing a quilt yesterday with Minky on the back, and oh. it just looks so cute. It's like a second quilt on the yeah, back. Exactly. Just that texture is so awesome. I really like using cute designs, something that's going to do like a sec, like she said, a secondary quilt mm -hmm. on the back. So yep. So be sure and do those. And yes. we'll. Oh, and so the PDFs available in oh. the notes and comments. It's attached underneath, and yeah. hopefully we've answered your troubleshoot troubleshooting tension issues. I think today. so. So let's talk about the quilt yes. behind Kim. Yes. This is one of mine. Oh, it's such I an awesome quilt. I just barely got it bound, so I'm super happy to be done with it. Um, not to be done with it, that, have, that it's finished. That it's finished. Uh, I really love crazy scrappy. I really love mm -hmm. just playing around with secondary designs and stuff like that. So this was really fun to, fun to make. Um, and you used a strip piecing method, right? Yeah, I just did string piecing. String piecing. Foundation string piecing. Yes. I did it on muslin. And I didn't follow really pattern. I mm. just do my own thing. The um, Rebecca downstairs quilted it for me because she was doing some testing. Exactly. So. And she did a great job. She just did an all over yeah, edge to edge wave. I love it. It looks super wavy and great. I love it how is. it turned out. It's so. a great. And your binding is really fun too. The binding. Uh, the binding was from Brenda's yard sale. The binding with this lovely wavy. Um, print that very much echoes the quilting. Yeah, it's really fun. Kind of really the nautical fun. theme he's got going here. So Yeah, love yep. it. All right, I think that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching mm -hmm. our Watch and Learn. Be sure to tune in next week. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already or like this video. We'd love to see you uh, next week and have fun quilting this week.